Sometimes the last minute unplanned trips end up being the best ones. After a few months of life being busy and not being able to get out camping, I finally had a free weekend and my goal was simple. Set up camp somewhere beautiful and find some great off-roading. This adventure delivered in a huge way. Stay tuned. Okay, so currently at my second charging stop of this trip, I'm in Olancha, California, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere, but there happens to be a Rivian charger here. And it's also just 30 miles south of Alabama Hills, which is where I'm headed for the weekend. The views here are really nice, actually. Um, there's some awesome mountains behind me with a little bit of snow on them and should be a preview of what Alabama Hills is going to be like. So um that area you should be able to see mount whitney the sierras covered in snow this time of year and i think it's going to be really beautiful i haven't camped there in a few years actually i've never been there uh to camp with my rivian so this will be a first with the rivian really excited to get out there um just topping off on charge here and then my buddy vic is going to meet me in a little bit he'll be a couple hours behind me but just got to find us a cool campsite for the night um, and then we don't really have a plan for this weekend. We're just going to take our time and kind of see what we feel like doing, but, um, yeah, topping off on charge and then I will be on my way shortly here. If you're interested in the cost of charging for this entire trip, I'll include that information at the end of this video. Okay, well, campsites don't get much better than this. Um, I had this spot marked. I've never been here before, and I wasn't sure if it was gonna be taken, but it's not. Um, really stoked. You can see the mountains are pretty crazy behind me, and all of the cool rocks that make up Alabama Hills are gonna be surrounding us in camp here. So really, really stoked to have this spot. Gonna get set up, it's gonna get dark and cool down pretty quickly here. Um, so gonna get started with that. And then Vic should be here pretty soon. So really excited to uh, have this amazing site for the weekend.
I spent some time enjoying the view, and by the time Vic arrived, it was getting cold and we were both ready for a good meal. Luckily, we had planned a great dinner for our first night at camp. All right, dinner is getting cooked up. We got chili tonight, which is perfect because it's pretty cold. Um, gonna let this simmer probably for another 15, 20 minutes and then we will be eating good. Camp's all set up here. The moon just came up and it's really cool. Ready to eat some dinner and uh, sit by the fire and warm up. All right, getting ready for bed here, and it is pretty cold. It's 41 degrees outside, 11 o'clock at night, and it's definitely gonna drop down into the 30s um, later at night and early morning. So I've got the camp stream hooked up. I haven't used this since the summer when it was really hot, and I tried it out using AC, and it worked pretty well, but wanna give it a shot now and see how it works for heating. So I've got the HVAC set to 70, middle two vents are on so the air is going straight into the ducting here and the fan speed's at one so pretty low um, and our battery currently is at 78 percent so i'm gonna let this run all night and um, check in in the morning we'll see what the battery drains like and um, also see how comfortable it is in the tent definitely excited to try this out so if you're watching this and wondering what is a camp stream and how does it work, I've got a separate video from last year where I reviewed and tested this very interesting product. For my cold weather test on this night, I gotta say getting into a warm toasty tent when it's cold outside is a pretty awesome feeling. However, I did see about 1% battery drain for every hour the HVAC was running and hooked up to the camp stream. So if you were trying to extend your battery life, you could always just run this for an hour before bed, shut it off, and you'd still be getting into a nice warm tent when you went to sleep. We just finished up breakfast, really been taking our time this morning. Um, the view behind us is incredible, so not really in any rush to get going anywhere, but we did want to drive around and explore Alabama Hills a little bit just to see what other campsites might be available. I don't think we're going to beat the one we're at right now, um, but should be fun to just get out, drive around, explore, um, maybe hike around a bit too. So. We're gonna do that in a few minutes and uh, just get moving for a bit. Vic's gonna leave his truck here 
and we'll probably end up back at the site for a second night, which uh, isn't a bad thing. It's really, really an incredible spot. So gonna get moving in a minute here. This was my first trip out on a new set of Falcon Wild P tires, and while I was hoping to test out the off-road capability, the terrain in this area really wasn't challenging enough to do that. So we'd have to wait till a little later in the trip to get out on a more serious trail. Now, if you're interested in how the Falcon Wild Peaks have been on the Rivian, I'll link that review video in the description below. So while this wasn't challenging off-roading, we did have fun driving around, exploring all the little offshoots and trails in this area and it was great to see where most of the other designated campsites were and we started to wonder if we should check out a different spot for our second night okay we've been driving around and it's been really cool exploring around here we just came across another site that is open um, truck is right behind me and i'll show you this spot it's pretty cool you still have a view of the mountains and um, it's a little more tucked away in the rocks here which is nice I like that um, you're closer to all these rock formations but I just don't know if it beats our current site so Vic and I are gonna talk it out a little bit here decide if we want to move to this spot um, or if we're gonna keep our current spot that we have so uh, We'll check back in in a little bit here. It was getting late in the afternoon and we still had to make a run into the town of Lone Pine to grab some firewood. And on that drive, we both agreed which campsite we wanted to head to for our second night. As a comparison to the first night with the camp stream, I used stay off mode in the Rivian on this second night and saw just 1% battery drain. On previous trips, I've seen this number down to 0%, so this is a great way to really conserve battery if you're looking to extend your range on longer trips. I definitely missed the heat of the camp stream when I got into my tent though. All right, we are basically packed up camp here. We ended up at the same spot as we camped the first night. And honestly, I'm not sad about it. This is an amazing location. Kind of blows my mind that places like this exist and that you can drive up to them and set up camp. It's really, really cool. So we had an awesome weekend out here. If you're watching this video and you've enjoyed it, would love if you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we will be getting out on a lot more adventures this year. So stay tuned for that. For right now, it's time to get on the road.
As we made our way out of Alabama Hills, I had one last stop planned for us to get our trucks on a more challenging trail before starting the drive back home. All right, we are on the Cerro Gordo Mine Road. Um, it started off really chill, but uh, getting a little more technical here for sure, which I'm really excited about. Um, Vic is gonna spot me on this next section, but uh, it's looking kind of gnarly. I'll give you a look at this here. Definitely looks doable, but uh, we're just gonna take our time and Vic's gonna do some spotting. Right, Vicky? Yes, sir. All right, let's do this. All right, we just finished up that section. Vic did a great job spotting me. Um, it was pretty gnarly. One of the more technical little bits of trail that I've done in the Rivian at least, um, but tons of fun. And the view up here, I'll show you, is not too shabby either. So Vic should be coming up this hill here any second now. Um, we definitely went further up the trail than we were planning, but that's okay. We're gonna stop here, have a little lunch, and then we gotta turn around and basically go back down the section we just came up and get back to the highway. Right on cue, there's Vic. All right, gonna eat some lunch here and get moving. All right, we're going back through that same section, downhill now.
Okay, the Rubian's back to the kind of flat, easy section, made it down the hill. And now, got to hike back up here and spot Vic on the way down. There's just as much hiking involved in this as there is driving. All right, I think we're done basically with the hard section. How was it? Uh, that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Maybe it's just the altitude. Yeah, but we got through it. That was awesome. Slow and steady. All right, well, we spent uh, probably two hours longer than we were planning up here. So time to head back down the trail and get on the highway. I'm at 36% battery right now. Definitely used quite a bit going up, but it's been a pretty steady climb uh, to when we turned around. So hoping to regen some battery on our way down here. All right, just finished out the trail, gained 1% battery on the way back down and got plenty of miles left to get to Olancha. Um, gonna air the tires back up and then start driving. We had a great time exploring this small section of the Cerro Gordo Road, and I hope to make it back in the future to complete this entire trail. For now, it was time to air up the tires and start the drive back home. So as promised, I wanted to share the charging costs for this whole trip. I covered a total of 530 miles and stopped four times to charge. Here's the breakdown of each of those stops. In Victorville at Electrify America, I actually didn't end up paying for this charge. It was one of those rare situations where I finished my charge and the screen said, your charge is on us. So that one was $0. The rest of my charging stops were at Rivian charging stations. I stopped in Olancha. And then on my way back, stopped in Alancha again, and also in Inyokern. And the total for the entire trip was $68.67. All right, that wraps up this trip. If you're new to the channel, check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you out on the next adventure.